I miss my wife mostly um, during the times that we had prior to this accident. The brakes of the other automobile that ran into my family's uh, vehicle uh, was defective. brakes were faulty to some degree and uh, my concern was to find out all the information and get all the facts. They are responsible to provide the best product and to stand behind that product uh, for the betterment of the consumer and in this case, this particular case, I felt uh, strongly that there was cover-up and there was a lack of concern uh, involving the brakes of this particular vehicle. After a five-year federal investigation, General Motors acknowledged on July 22nd, 1999, that the anti-lock brakes on 3.6 million sport utility vehicle, pickup trucks, and full-size vans would be slow to stop the vehicles under certain circumstances. The action covered an unusually large number of vehicles because the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and GM discovered two different problems affecting different vehicles. The federal agency said that it had received over 10,000 complaints from the public about brake problems in the vehicles involving 2,111 crashes and 293 injuries. These complaints were among the highest the federal agency has received on any brake issue. Robert Lang, GM's vehicle safety director at the time, said that the company had agreed to fix the problems. Automakers consistently deny that safety defects are related to crashes. To do otherwise would increase their vulnerability to lawsuits. But Mr. Lang did acknowledge in a telephone conference call with reporters that problems with the ABS brakes would sometimes lengthen stopping distances. Anti-lock brakes are designed to help drivers avoid skidding, allowing motorists to continue steering as they slow down. When the wheels start to skid during braking, the electronic anti-lock devices automatically reduce the amount of braking pressure being applied until the wheels begin rolling again. The devices then continuously adjust the brakes to apply as much braking as possible without allowing the wheels to lock and skid. Anti-lock brakes are supposed to allow a driver to steer around an obstacle while braking. They also tend to reduce stopping distances on wet pavement, although that is not their primary purpose. For the more serious of the two anti-lock brake problems, GM recalled 1.1 million four-wheel drive versions of the Chevrolet Blazer and GMC Jimmy Sport Utility vehicles and Chevrolet S10 and GMC Sonoma pickup trucks sold in the 1991 through 1996 model years. A switch in those vehicles, anti-lock brakes, was prone to failure, Mr. Lang said. GM also issued a service policy for two and a half million two-wheel drive sport utility vehicles, pickups, and vans. The company fixes vehicles free under a recall or a service policy. A service policy is a less drastic action and is often used for minor difficulties like paint flaws. Because a manufacturer does not admit a safety defect in a service policy, such policies provide weaker evidence than a recall for people suing automakers after crashes. These days, we're accustomed to news of massive automobile recalls, like the recent recall of millions of Toyotas for defective brake pedals, acceleration, and other safety problems. Each time, it seems, auto manufacturers claim they didn't know, and then it turns out that they did. Every time, it seems, federal enforcers, such as the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, drop the ball and capable of acting until people die, long after safety violations are first reported. It makes you wonder, what can we really do to hold greedy automakers responsible for their decisions to place profit before the safety of drivers and passengers? If manufacturers don't have the integrity or responsible judgment, if laws don't have sufficient teeth, and if government agencies don't have the ability or resources, what protects our families from death and serious injury? The answer is the civil justice system, which continues to protect our rights and work on our behalf. In lawsuits against negligent auto manufacturers, verdicts in favor of innocent victims are often the only things which put automakers feet to the fire. 
the evidence is clear. Litigation has been the driving force behind a staggering number of safety innovations that would not have occurred otherwise. Today, the Insider Exclusive goes behind the headlines in GM Defects, Defective ABS Brakes, to examine how Victor Probanic, founding member Probanic and Probanic, won a landmark court decision for his client, Harry Shaper and his family, in a very difficult and challenging products liability case, which resulted in new consumer protection legislation. On December 16, 1995, the Schaefer family was struck by a GM vehicle in a high-speed collision, which resulted in injury to Tina and Harry Schaefer and their two children, Sarah and Laura Schaefer. Two lawsuits were filed on behalf of the Schaefers against the driver and his company and against GM, which had the defective ABS brake system. The first case against the driver of the GM vehicle and his company was settled for a confidential sum. The second case against GM went to trial in Washington County, Pennsylvania, and after a week-long trial, the jury returned a verdict in favor of the Schaefers and against General Motors, finding that the ABS brake system installed in the 1994 Chevrolet S10 Blazer was defective and awarded the Schaefers collectively $1.75 million. In fact, the jury determined that 100% of the responsibility was appropriately placed upon General Motors. The Schaefer's case was the first case ever tried and the first ever to establish that the ABS braking system, which was the subject of GM's special policy letter issued in May of 2000, was in fact capable of producing crashes and injuring users of the GM vehicles and those around them. General Motors paid the verdict. Victor Probanik has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in White Oak, in Pennsylvania, and in the United States. His goal is not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure products are made safer and to hold manufacturers more accountable. These successes drive him to help more people who have been harmed by corporations who put profits ahead of people. Victor has built a substantial reputation by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down. His amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from White Oak, Pennsylvania. It is my great pleasure to introduce Victor Probanik to the show. Welcome to the show, Victor. Thank you, Steve. Tell our audience a little bit about your firm, what type of law your firm practices. We represent people that have been harmed by hospitals, doctors, tractor trailers, corporate America. Or Little guys. Yeah, always. And you do that by choice? Yes. Why? It's, it's our belief, it's our mission to do that. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes in these kinds of cases, you have very challenging cases. Yes, we do. Where as a result of the case, the law sometimes changes. Yes. And one of them, the, one of the main reasons we are doing this show today is your client, Harry Schaefer. Yes. Was involved with a case that dealt with the ABS brakes. Yes. Tell our audience what ABS brakes are and a little bit about Harry and what this case is all about. Harry and his family, his wife and his two daughters, were traveling down the highway and an SUV manufactured by General Motors came to a stop sign and rolled through the stop sign and entered this high-speed highway causing a horrific collision in which Harry's wife, Tina, suffered a, a fracture to her spine, which had to be repaired with rods and screws. His little girls were injured and Harry himself suffered a a fracture in his neck as a result of the crash. The car that hit them had yes. what type of brakes? The car that hit them uh, was an SUV that was equipped with the then comparatively new uh, ABS braking system. ABS mm -hmm. brakes are the kind of brakes that are supposed to prevent a skid from occurring and allow you to stop in a shorter distance than you would have otherwise. This, uh, as this case evolved, Originally, a suit was filed against the other driver for going through the stop sign. Yes. He was a local accountant uh, who 
swore uh, that the truck, in spite of his applying the brakes and plenty of time before the stop sign, rolled through the stop sign in spite of everything he could do, wouldn't stop, and that's what caused the crash. Mm -hmm. In the course of the trial, the accountant sued General Motors on that theory and hired an expert to, uh, because of his injuries sustained in the crash uh, yeah. himself. Now, so there were two lawsuits going on. One you settled against the driver and his yes. insurance company. Correct. The other case went to trial against General Motors. That's right. And it was, as we call it, a product defect case. Right. The braking system. What was wrong with the braking system? The ABS brake systems on certain of the General Motors vehicles for a certain period of time would, if they hit a little patch of gravel, for instance, on the roadway, they would go into the ABS mode and fail to return to the correct stopping mode. So if you hit a little patch of gravel, the truck would, exactly as the driver of this vehicle said, would not stop in the normal stopping distance. Mm -hmm. And our case was the very first one of those ever to have been tried in the country for the problem that existed in these vehicles with these brakes. Now, you won a verdict of, was it $1.75 million? That's correct, Steve. Okay. Um, the As a result of this verdict, GM issued not a recall, but what did they issue? GM had actually issued before the trial a special policy letter right. uh, to owners of and dealers involved with this vehicle because there had been thousands of these complaints made to the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, which is the entity that governs this sort of thing, before our case. It, it, was, it was one of those situations where the government did not insist upon a recall for many reasons. I mean, those are costly battles yeah. for our government to yeah. fight General Motors. Uh, in fact, I remember reading there were more complaints on these on this braking system, over 10,000 of them, than there had ever been on any other product that dealt with automobiles. That's correct. Um, recently, in fact, the last couple of days, Chrysler was ordered by the National Highway Tra Traffic Transportation Safety Administration to issue a recall on some of its Jeep, Jeep Cherokees. And we have a case here where they're refusing to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in cases like this, when you talk about a special policy letter, what is the difference legally between a manufacturer issuing a special policy letter, which basically tells an owner of a vehicle, you can bring it in and we'll, right. we'll swap mm -hmm. it out, we'll change it at no expense to you, and a recall? What's the difference? It's less costly for the manufacturer. It's more like a compromised, negotiated solution. Uh, as compared to a recall. Recalls, companies can fight recalls and they have, uh, believe it or not, they have a lot more money to do it with than the National Transportation yeah. Safety Board. So yeah. our government's agencies have to pick their battles, so to speak. Today we're fortunate to have your client, Harry Schaefer, on the show. That's right. So That's it's right. my great pleasure to bring him on the show right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Harry Schaefer to the show. Welcome to the show, Harry. Thank you, sir. Take our audience back to the day of the accident. What do you remember? Well, I remember uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, I remember it was a clear night. Mm -hmm. um, the sun had just gone down. And it was kind of dusk, between dusk and uh, dark, you know. And... Uh, I remember approaching uh, the intersection. Um, there was cars, you know, coming the other way on the road that I was traveling. And then there was a uh, road that intersected with the road that I was traveling on. Um, and it was coming at kind of a, almost uh, not at a T section, but at a, uh, an offset, uh, kind of almost like a head on or somewhat off camber at a 45 degree angle. Um, I remember traveling at you know, normal speed and everybody was relaxed. Uh, the radio wasn't on, but we were getting ready to go to a Christmas party. Um, and we were going to drop the kids off at uh, my brother-in-law's. They were going to watch the kid. Well, my wife and I uh, went to the uh, party. And uh, I remember approaching the intersection 
and I remember seeing a car off to my right uh, approaching the intersection, and I, you know, saw that it was you know, slowing down to the stop sign, and then uh, not able to come to a complete stop, the uh, car just slid right through the uh, intersection and uh, hit us kind of on a head-on con configuration on my wife's side of the car. When did you first learn that there was a problem with the GM car that hit you regarding the brakes? Um, it wasn't until after we had gotten the police report and uh, hearing the testimony of the other uh, gentleman that was driving the other car there, uh, he was claiming that his brakes had failed yeah. or they were malfunctioning. And uh, right away I was, you know, somewhat skeptical of that. But at the same time, after doing some research to find out who, who he was as an individual, I, I uh, began to suspect that, uh, you know, Maybe somebody, he's telling the truth. Yeah, that, yeah. that his, his testimony is credible. And it was actually, Victor, it was actually as a result of his lawsuit against GM that this whole issue of the brake thing came out. That's correct? right, Steve. Um, now that you have been through the legal system and you've seen how it works firsthand, uh, what do you think about corporations and how they handle mistakes or defective products and their attitude towards the consumers? Well, it's always about money a lot of times, unfortunately. And, and then there's also uh, responsibility uh, at different levels of corporations. And, mm -hmm. People don't want to um, assume responsibility for their particular areas of expertise, and, and there's other factors that play into that. But I think uh, a lot of times it's just the bottom line. It's it's exposure that they don't want to be exposed to, and uh, that could cause uh, you know sales to decline or consumer confidence, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this before about the corporation's approach. How much does it cost? They compare, you know, how much does it cost to recall? The defective product versus how many cases are they going to have to maybe win or lose and how much money they're going to pay out and oftentimes the second alternative of going to court and paying out lesser amount of money is the better thing to do unfortunately in our country we really don't have a kind of a consumer protection agency that really has teeth into it right. that makes them change it regardless of the cost right if we had that, uh, possibly a lot of these safety uh, devices would be implemented right away, right? Um, what is your opinion of Victor's law firm? Wonderful. He's a godsend. I really believe that. At that particular moment uh, in my life, it was, a, it was a hard time. Yeah, we do a lot of shows, and the, really the only shows that we like to do are the ones where a law firm is willing to take something to trial because that's when the truth comes out. Even if you settle beforehand, at least you've done enough homework where the other side is prompted to say, hey, it might be in our best interest to settle for something reasonable, right? Right. I want to thank you very much for being on our show, and best of luck to you and your family. Thank you, Steve. Let's talk about lawsuits against manufacturers, particularly the automobile industry, and as a result of lawsuits that have been won by trial lawyers like yourself, right. what are some of the changes that the, has forced the manufacturers to implement? Well, first and foremost, uh, seat belts, airbags, safety glass, the way windshields are fastened, stiffer, safer frames in vehicles so they don't collapse, roofs that don't collapse as readily as they used to, uh, child safety seats. Uh, there are, I don't know how many, many, many highly, highly significant uh, safety changes in every automobile that's on the road today that are products of, uh, I, th I think, criticism and claims bought, brought by lawyers on behalf of people who got hurt by things that should have been safer. And oftentimes in these cases, you will find evidence when you depose their management, their researchers, that they were aware of the defective nature of some of their parts, some of the issues that were filed suit against, right? Yes, absolutely. And they chose not to change them. Why? Because of the money. Because of the money. So this always comes down to without trial lawyers suing on behalf of injured people, uh, more people would be hurt 
had it not been for a successful lawsuit against them, correct? Yes, they would never have the incentive because of the limits that are well known on our government. They can't do everything to sort of police our world. Uh, changes brought about by lawsuits are, are really a fulcrum for uh, a safer world for us today. What recommendation do you give our audience if they've been injured by a product and they're not sure whether it's their fault or whether it's the product's fault? What do you, what do you recommend that they do? Well, if it's a, if it's a car, you have to save the, you have to save the, save the vehicle. Any product you have to save. Cars can be a little unwieldy because, uh, you know, any case that warrants looking into, there are always hor horrible, horrible injuries or yeah. deaths involved, but the survivors, the ones that are able to can save it and, it can be looked at because everybody who dies in a car crash shouldn't. Everybody who's seriously injured in a car crash should not. Everybody who wrecks a car because of a blow out on a highway uh, may have not had a good, good tire in their car. And thanks to the internet, you can go online and you can Google, for example, I think this is the Blazer, the S4 Blazer, wasn't right. it? The Chevy mm -hmm. S4 right. Blazer. Um, you can Google a type of a vehicle complaints a type of vehicle lawsuits, a right. product, and you will come up with, if you come up with thousands of other people, then you must know there must be something wrong Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. Right? The, the, the internet has uh, changed, the, changed the world in, uh, in that way too. Well, thanks to lawyers like yourself, we are discovering that manufacturers, not all of them, but sometimes they put profits before people. They don't implement safety device, devices uh, when they should to protect us all. And it, had it not been for a case like this, brakes still might still have been a problem, right? That's right. I want to thank you very much for being on our program. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.